What's going on guys? Vic be back with a Game Case Arcades video. On this one today, we got a 32 inch vertical arcade cabinet going out. The Big Lebowski. i never seen the movie, so I, I figure it says it like that. Let's take a look. <laughs> All right, guys, you know the drill. If you're not following me on all the socials, what are you waiting for? Be sure to follow me at Vic underscore VP, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. I actually did something pretty new that I realized I could do, and I was like, ooh, let me do this from now on. So TikTok is going to have more activity on it. I always say in my videos, be sure to follow me on Instagram again at Vic underscore VP because I post a lot on my stories. That's the one that's like 24 hours, and then after 24 hours, it disappears, and you no longer can see it. But now I actually kind of figured out something. Uh, I'm basically taking all my stories for the day and then I post it to TikTok probably a day or two later. So it's kind of cool, this whole social media world it ties in. So what are you waiting for? Be sure to follow me on all the socials. If you did, you would have seen ground up obviously of every single build, especially this one. I'll give you a nice little background to it. We'll talk about the customer itself and we're gonna talk obviously about the build itself. We got a couple of hidden stuff and all that. I'm excited because it is really the first official 32 inch vertical cabinet going out to a customer. Let's, let's bring it back. Let's start with the basics on this. All right, let's start with the basics, the overview on this. What is this big, what are we looking at? We are looking at a 32 inch vertical cabinet. This right here, the customer only wanted the cabinet. There is no system included in this. There's no games to it. It is just the cabinet. Vic, there's something on the screen though. What is that? I, I had to put something on the screen, uh, not to mention it helps me test the buttons to make sure everything works, but also like visually for you, you know, looking at a blank screen and me personally, like looking at a blank screen and talking and shooting the promo video, it just, it won't look right. People will be like, ah, you're selling something that's broken. There's nothing on the screen. So th there's no system to this. This right now is running the Raspberry Pi Mr. Burns image. This is not included. I will be taking it out. It's just like I said, I need something on the screen to just make it less awkward. So again, like I said, this is the cabinet alone. I, I enjoy, this is like the best part of it because I get people that email me. And again, like I said in past videos, you can either get a fully decked out system. You want a plug and play system, I could do that. Or if you want just a cabinet alone, you want just artwork alone, I could do that. If you look behind this cabinet, we got three V pins lined up. Those will be the complete builds. Uh, not to mention secretly tucked away. This is so cool because it went from like arcade to arcade furniture. One V-Pen is going out to Project Canada. You remember that crazy guy? He's back. He's going to get a full-blown V-Pen. And he also asked me to build him this cool, I call it arcade furniture. He asked me to build this gun cart looking style thing to hold his guns, his guitars, and his controllers. So this is awesome. This is exactly what I wanted to do. You can message me if you want the cabinet along. You want to fully deck that stuff. You could challenge me, just like Project Canada, he's challenging me with this kind of furniture thing. I, I love it, I think it's awesome. I, this is the arcade world for me, I, I get a kick every time. So I said in the beginning of the video, this is the first ever 32 inch vertical arcade cabinet going out to a customer. If you see my past videos, you might have seen my personal hyper vertical, that is a 32 inch vertical arcade cabinet dubbed hyper vertical because I am running a PC based system with my hyperspin image in it. I also have a trackball on mine and such. Customer though on this only one of the cabinet. So I'm dubbing it just the big Lebowski 32 inch vertical arcade cabinet. So he's actually dabbing into like the arcade world. He's doing, I think a shooter build too. He also asked me for help on that. Just like basics, like, Hey, Victor's main work and nothing like, so far, nothing cabinet related. He might want a cabinet in the future. If he does, awesome, I'm all ears. You just gotta join the wait list and such. But he is running, I believe he's gonna be building a launch box build on this. It's actually kind of funny how this all started. Originally, he wanted, I believe it was a 49 inch build. Then it went to a 43 inch. It was either a 43 or a 49. Uh, and I actually did the whole CNC drawing of the, I did it on the 43, it must've been 43. I did it on a 43 inch screen and it was tall. A 43 inch screen, it was tall. This right now is standing at 74 and a half inches tall on casters. Without the casters, it's 72.75 inches tall. 32 inch screen. We, he wanted originally the 43 and then it's kind of like when we went into like, I went into the draw it, 
I think it was almost 90 inches tall. I, I, you gotta remember, you have, the, you have a marquee at the top. You could remove the marquee, but there's no marquee then. There, there's so much that was into it, but he wanted 43 originally, uh, but then it kind of went into like, hey Vic, it's kind of tall. Is there a way you could cut the cabinet in half? Almost like how Game Room Solution does. It's like, mm, I don't like doing that. I don't feel like it's, you're gonna see the line. Um, you know, I also don't feel like it's safe. Uh, structurally sound. Uh, I, I like my sidewalls one solid piece. So it's kind of cool what the journey went. Yes, I had to spend a day or two just to draw up on the CNC the 43. He basically said, you know what Vic, I gotta put this inside of I think like an SUV. I don't know what the exact plan is because he's driving five hours to get here to pick it up. Uh, I don't know what it is, but we settled on this. What's also great when it comes to like customers meshing me, as you can see, hey Vic, 43, can you do it? You know, Let's figure it out together. Hey, Vic, you know what? It's too big. What's really cool with this one, though, is that he requested the control panel to be on a hinge. I don't have that on my personal build, and I say to everybody, listen, I'm down to try it. If you're down to give me the chance, I will try it. And as you can see, this is on a hinge. Very cool feature. Uh, it's just one of those things where, listen, I don't know everything. I'm not going to say I'm the pro. I'm the expert. I know everything. You can't tell me something new. This is cool. I love how it is. I basically did the same exact style of hinge that I do with my four player cabs. You can see the bottom here and I'll take you in closer. I'm actually hiding the hinge with the artwork. It's cool. The only big thing is that this here is a little bit different than mine, meaning my faceplate here, I'll turn to you. My faceplate here on my machine, it comes right to the edge. But as you can see, this is indented. It has to be indented. This way, the panel flips up. It's just cool. Uh, that's honestly the very unique thing with this build and that was the one thing that the customer did request. When we were going into like, hey, you know, I want the hinge. Usually when it comes to hinges, you want like an arcade clamp to lock it in place. Um, thing though is like, you know, trying to get to the, to the clamp, you have to open up the rear. So I do have two screws in the back, but in all honesty, this right here, it's not gonna go anywhere. You have to really pull this up. That's what's kind of cool with how I built it. That's what's awesome with it. Uh, I'm just happy that, you know, a customer gave me a challenge of a hinged control panel and I was able to uh, do it. So now when we first were looking at this cabinet, I don't really remember it because I talked to a lot of people, but I don't think this was supposed to be a big Lebowski themed cabinet originally. Um, he had a third party do the artwork on it and what's kind of funny, I, I post videos on Instagram and I post it on Facebook and all that of the builds. Some people are looking at this cabinet and they might be, they might see that it might be missing something. And I did tell this to the customer, but it's his cabinet, it's his call, whatever you want. I don't know this movie, but kind of like just the look of it, I see bowling pins. I see bowling lanes. The artwork on it is very cool. Uh, again, he had a third party. I don't know how much he commissioned for this. It looks nice, but I'm going to go into the artwork. I'll show you the side by side kind of thing that I caught. I had to tell the customer, Hey, you got to talk to this person that made this art because it wasn't a high resolution image. But the one thing that somebody, I had a couple people message me like, Vic, man, what did you do to this cabinet, bro? You got big Lebowski. You got a bowling thing cabinet, but you're missing a trackball. I, I know I, uh, I told the customer, but, uh, it's not up to me. Uh, I did mention to the customer, hey, you possibly need a trackball on it, but he wanted the dedicated four-way in the middle. So again, customers, you tell me. It's not my build, it is your build. You tell me and I try to make it work and I'm trying to make it happen. Also, again, going back, I don't think originally this was supposed to be Big Lebowski. He originally placed the order for black T-molding. I already ordered everything and then he switched off the T-molding. He had to pay me for a new T-molding. Granted though, I will be giving him the black T-molding. Uh, he paid for it, so I'm not gonna keep it. He's actually gonna use it for a shooter cabinet he's building, so it all works out in the end. And obviously, just going back to the trackball comment, I could do a trackball. I have a trackball on my build, so it is doable. Uh, but again, customer, this is what he wanted, that's what he gets. Let's touch up on the artwork real quick, okay? Because this is a big deal. Um, I didn't do the artwork, and I could have, but he had a third party, I don't know if it's a friend of his, it's fine. But the big thing, and again, it's my job to make sure that the cabinet, you know, this has my name on it. You know, even if it wasn't my artwork, the cabinet, you know, when somebody goes over his house, it's like, whoa, 
Where'd you get that from? I hope people say I got it from VPP Game Case Arcade. Basically what I'm getting at is that I sent him a template, which again, I always say in my videos, you know, my CNC is not perfect. My CNC file makes this seven inches, but after the cut, I might be like six inches and three quarters. You know, it, it might not be exact. So I tell people I can't do outlines, kind of like my centipede build. If you look very carefully, I do have the outlines, but it's not perfectly in line. And I cannot, I will not, and I cannot, ever since I learned from Project Canada, I can't do a uh, button kind of um, markings. You know, if you wanted like a circle here that says A, I can't do that. This is what I could do as far as control panels. You can see all the other control panels. Again, my CNC is just not, it's not perfect. It's not a million thousand percent accurate, so I can't do some things. But when it comes to artwork, again, this person sent me the file, so I sent him the outline. Just like how I make my artwork, I did the same exact thing. I made the Photoshop file, this right here, Again, Gulf Coast Decals is my printer. He's the one that prints the artwork for me. He needs his resolution at 300 DPI. No lower, if it is lower, it's all fuzzy and pixelated and such. So I made the templates for him and then I sent it to him. He then transferred it to his you know, third party person. I then about, I would say a week, a week and a half later, we got the, I got the artwork in. Uh, and I loaded up on my computer and I said to him, I was like, there's something wrong with this artwork. It's I don't know where the person got the image from, but it is pixelated, it is bad. Basically, again, on my computer, I just kind of zoom in. I'm at 100%, I can see what it looks like, and I'll zoom in to like 300, and the lines should be clean. But on his first rendition, it was fuzzy as heck. I'm gonna post it right now. You're gonna see the original file kind of zoomed in, and then you're gonna see the new file, the one that is printed here now. Uh, again, originally the, the, the company that's, that did the artwork for him, they sent it to me in a PDF format and they sent it to me with the outline of the cabinet in like a blue outline and I was like, send it to me in a Photoshop file, I could play with the layers because he sent me this and then he was like, maybe you could also add like the bowling arrow lanes, like the 10 arrows on a bowling lane. So I said, that's fine, I could try it. If it's quick and easy, I could try it but I needed it in like layer format and they had the outline, I couldn't touch the outline. Same thing when it came to like the buttons, they had like the circles on the thing and I couldn't remove the circles and I was like, I just need a clean image. It was going, it was a little bit back and forth but I also felt bad for the customer because I don't know how much you paid for the artwork. And for this company to send a, an image like that, you know, basically I don't know what they did but it, it went from like a real bowling lane to almost cartoonized. I like it though, I do like how this looks. I, I'm happy with the end result, it's not fuzzy at all. I think it looks cool, they added like the three stars to it. Um, basically the marquee, the control panel, and the underneath control panel, it's the same exact image, so it looks cool. I like it. The only big thing is that this big Lebowski poster here, uh, even Gulf Coast decals is like, Vic, just give you a heads up, man, that image is pixelated. And I told the customer, and they were trying to go back and forth, uh, the customer and this, printing company, or I should say the designer, and this was the best they could do. Granted though, it is a movie poster, like it's a real poster, it's a real image. Those are always difficult, I get it, but something like as far as like this bowling lane, I would have tried to just find like a high resolution background. I like it though, I think it's cool. Me personally, from seeing the original one to this, it's almost like it's cartoonized, almost like you, you did like a Simpsons cartoon over, and it looks great, I'm not, make, I'm not making fun of it, it's just the big thing is that again, I'll do the artwork. I took that step. I could have been like, listen, you gave me this artwork and I printed it. I don't do that. I took that extra step and I made sure that the file is good. Cause again, this has my name on it. It might not be my artwork, but it's got my name on it. So imagine, you know, imagine if I didn't tell him, right? Let's say I didn't tell him that the artwork was fuzzy. He comes to pick this up. He's like, yo Vic, what the hell with this artwork? Like I didn't send you that. You know, I got a professional design. That's where, like I said, I gotta do my part. So, you know, I don't know how other builders do it. I was just very happy to do my part and to make sure that this looks good. I don't care if you get the artwork from me. I don't care. I care about making sure that it looks great. I don't care. That was my main thing. And again, like I say, I'm gonna repeat myself again. You know, this customer could pick it up. If I didn't correct his image, he could blame me and be like, I had a pro design it, you printed it. Gulf Coast decals printed, you know, we, you should, you know, give me my money back for Gulf Coast. No, it doesn't, 
And honestly, I'm very grateful for Justin because Justin also, the sides were perfect. But I did mention him, hey, listen, you know, on my computer, I kind of see it a little fuzzy. And he said to me, yes, Vic, it is a little funny, but it, a little fuzzy, but it's not drastic. It's not awful. So now I just zoomed in just to kind of show you again the original file. Like, you know, people say what clarifies as fuzzy. You can kind of see the face. The face is good, but granted, like, I have you zoomed in. Uh, we're right now, like, you know, three inches from the thing. They basically added, like, this kind of, I don't know how to explain it. You can see, like, the hair is cleaner. Again, it, it, it is what it is. Again, it is a movie poster. I'm just trying to also see, because some people can, like, like that, you can see like the arm here. Again, that's like the little bit of the fuzzes. It's not drastic. Again, that's like if you were like, you know, where is it? Like if I'm close to it, but if you're standing normal kind of feet away, you don't see the pixelization. So that's the artwork. Again, it's just like, you know, for me, I got your back. Uh, you know, I, that's that's what I tell people all the time. You don't have to use my artwork. You might find something I as, My job is to make sure this looks presentable. Uh, that's probably the only thing I got upset about was like, you know, a design company, a designer sent me that file and I was like, you should have seen that. Uh, but again, I, I told I got your back. I'm not upset. I'm not, you know, you didn't use me. I, I, my job is to make sure that this looks good and I got your back. That's what I just want to get out of this right there. But all in all, it's solid. He went with this uh, bright red. Uh, as far as red team only, you could do bright red or I have like blood red. It's a little bit on the darker side. So he went with this bright red. Again, originally it was supposed to be black. I don't really remember what it originally was supposed to be. Um, but we switched it up and it's pretty cool. He also didn't do any LEDs. I'll talk about the LEDs real quick. The only LEDs here is inside the marquee and inside the cabinet. There is no underglow. There's no LEDs here. The customer did not want this to be lit up and all that. If I turn off the lights, the, it'll, you'll see the LEDs, but I do have a back door on this it will be sealed and such. You just won't see, you, there's no LEDs, you're just gonna see it in the marquee. But all in all, it is solid stuff. Again, with the plexiglass, this is a 32 inch 1080p Insignia. He made sure, he's like, Vic, make sure that Insignia, that TV is 1080p. That definitely outputs 1080p. And all in all, it's solid, it's, it's great. No LED buttons, I, I love it. I, it's very clean. Again, dedicated four way in the middle using the zippy joystick. And then I did use the IL joysticks and Zuzu hat buttons on it. He did request for this purple button. Uh, I think that's gonna be his exit or his enter. And solid. He did also request the iPack. He does have an iPack 2 on this. I'm gonna take you in, we'll take a look at the wiring. Taking a quick look at the wiring. As you can see, we have the iPack 2 right here. Clean wiring as always. The big thing though is that the customer did request. He said, Vic, I want lots of slack. I want a lot of slack on all the wires for the buttons and such I said okay that's fine so as you can see we have two big bundles here uh it's slack so if the customer ever wants to do anything he can but if he was to ever kind of swap out a button these buttons again zuzu hat buttons you have to actually take the micro switch out and then you can remove the button itself so it's all solid again an ipack 2 on it the one thing i do want to do before the video i'm going to just go into the raspberry pi and just to show you that every button does work that's my main thing there. You can also see kind of like, I'll take you in closer to show you the importance when it came to this hinged door. You can see the best here. You can see right here. You see this right here? So we have the control panel right along the line. The biggest thing with this is to make sure that the T molding is good. So I'm not ripping out T molding, but if you look carefully at the panel here, it does curve in a little bit. I do need that on purpose. This way it's kind of a clean pull in and pull up situation. And now with that, you do have a little bit of an overhang on the vinyl. That's a given though. It has to be like that. This way it kind of gives you an illusion of a clean edge to edge. But again, just little details. It's pretty cool. Again, some people like to see the actual building aspect of it. I'll take you in real quick here. He did want a sound system in it. So I did get the Z313. This right here is the Y and this is my, my Raspberry Pi. Uh, he, we do have the Z313 on this. I have the volume controller right underneath. So he just goes underneath. I'll bring you back to show you exactly how I did that. But again, clean wiring as always, everything out of the way. As you can see here, like making sure that we don't touch that bottom panel. Beautiful. You don't even need, so there's two, two, two screws here that you go from inside the cabinet up. You would hit those and that locks it in place. But again, 
If I really yank it, then I pull it up. But other than that, it's solid. And now again, just to show you, it's right underneath here, the wheel. Awesome. It's got a subwoofer in it. We have the Z313 speakers up above. Show you the rear real quick. So again, this will have a door on it. Speakers right here pointing upwards. So there's holes here, speaker grill holes upwards on that. You can see I do have the subwoofer bolted down. Again, he's gonna be putting a PC here. Uh, when he ordered the iPad 2, he actually ordered another iPad 2. Again, I think he's doing a uh, shooter cabinet. So that's in here for him as well. And also, like I said, I will give him the um, other T molding. But awesome stuff. Again, it's on casters. It's easily movable. It's got the nice plug on it. He didn't want any fans and such on it. It's just solid. All right, so real quick, I'm just gonna go through the configuration as far as on the RetroPie, just to show you that every button works. Just wanna make sure the customer does see that I did test and such. So let's rock. Again, this is running an iPack 2. So you should be able to see the screen and you can see the control panel. So we got up, down, left, right. So again, you can see it all there. We're gonna go start, coin, a, B, X, Y. Again, iPad is known as keyboard. It's keyboard input. So as you can see, it is doing it there. We're gonna go with the black in the middle. The purple looks like it's return, that's enter. These are in sync. So this controller and this is linked to this. So if I press it, it says already taken, already taken. Let's go to player two. So up, down, left, right, button one. Again, you can see there it's doing keyboard inputs. Two, three, Four, we're gonna do start, we're gonna do coin. Awesome, and again, like I said, these are in sync. This is all mapped together, so if I hold this left, it's gonna skip down. I go right or up, I should say, good, down, and we're good to go. So that is proof everything works. Well guys, there you guys have it. The first ever 32 inch vertical cabinet going out to a customer. I always say this in my videos, yes, these are on casters. They do slide. Somebody did request if I could put locking casters. As you can see though, the wheels are very, it's almost like it's floating. So I would have to kind of rearrange or modify where the wheel is, but all in all, solid build. Customer's picking it up today, so I will saran wrap it. This way it's all ready for him to go. Man, I love what I do, I love what I do. Stay tuned on the next one. We got three V pins coming up. That's, that's honestly the next video, so stay tuned on that. Vic VP, Game Case Arcades, Game on, my guys. Game on. One single flip of the switch. There you go.